The lovely Christy and I went to go see a comedy show at the San Jose Improv a couple of weeks ago. And a Giants game broke out. Uh, Am I right? Almost. Oh, God. Want to know, wanna know who I didn't see until we were walking out? Want to know who was at the show with us? Matt Cain. Really? Matt Cain and his lady walked out right in front of us. I thought that you were setting yourself up for a Gabe Kapler. I found those jokes to be <laughs> analytically quite humorous. I watched the show <laughs> and I laughed. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh, it was a consideration. Seventy-one percent of those jokes made me guffaw. <laughs> <laughs> the caner, huh? The caner, and I was like, "Uh oh, like that's cool, the caner." But I'm also thinking, "Oh, that's a sign." You go all the way to San Jose. Doesn't caner live up in the North Bay? You go, as do I. You go all the way to San Jose, and I'm going to see him. As the Giants are coming down the stretch, I was like, oh, God, they're not going to score another run for the rest of the year because they're about to get caned. Jeez. How many times did you say the Giants have scored zero or one run this year? 34. You know what their record is in games in which they scored one or fewer runs? Uh, One in 33. Two in 32. Two and 32. They got a win with uh, huh, Logan Webb. Uh-huh. Logan Webb beat Colorado on July 9th, and... Uh, Beck, Tristan Beck, oh. got the win over Arizona August 3rd. And uh, this is courtesy Alex Pavlovich and uh, courtesy Matt Nahigi and our boss, courtesy Lucas, who is like a triple relay yeah, here. a lot of courtesy going on. A lot on. of courtesy. It's like a courtesy telephone. But Logan Webb was a part of like 12 of these games, I think. 12 of them. 12 of them. That, and yeah. I'm, I'm looking right now. That is, that is an accurate statement. No, no, no. Slow down and say that again. Logan Webb, how many games has he started this year? 30, I would guess. Okay. In 12 of them. Yeah. Close to half the time, the Giants gave him zero or one run. That's an unbelievable stat. Matt Kane looks at that and goes, dude, I was lucky. Yeah, right. I was lucky in life. They lit it up for me. No doubt. The fact that Logan Webb has 10 wins is more remarkable when you think he, about it. He was incredible this year. He was incredible. If he had had some run support, he'd be a Cy Young candidate. He'd be a Cy Young candidate. No doubt about it. I'm looking it up right now. How many starts did Logan have this year? Uh, Logan Webb uh, has started uh, 32. 32. 99 total runs. I just did the math. Which Jeez. Well, that, actually, that sounds like a decent number. That's like almost that's three, that's three and a hook, three and change, but barely three and if change. If you look it's at almost it, exactly three. They lose five nothing. They lost nine one. I mean, that might be on him. You lost six nothing. You won four two. You won four one. You lost two one. You lost one nothing. Back to back losses. Unreal. And then you won three one. You lost three two. You lost. You won another game one nil. As I mentioned, you lost three two. Poor guy. And, you know, down the stretch, yeah. his last five outings, not including today, he got one, one, zero, nine, and two this runs. Man, this man went to Coors Field last week, threw eight innings, and gave up one run on four hits. That's unbelievable pitching. The Giants lost that game. Oh, yeah. The Giants I mean, lost he got knocked game. around, Mark. <laughs> four runs, no, uh, four hits, no walks. In um, Colorado, one Ernie. There's one specific giant we want to talk about. Something happened to him today, and he is still a very, very important figure with the rest of this season. We'll explain that in a second, but let's go to Chad and Concord. You think I'm a positive guy. Watch this. Hey, Chad, thanks for calling Willard and Dibs. What's up? Willard and Dibs, how's it going, man? Coach Chad out here in Concord, man. Now living in Chile down in South America, man. And uh, as an international baseball coach, but I couldn't help but hear you guys are already counting out the Giants? Yeah. Like, like how? Because, because look at the teams in front of them. Okay, hold, uh, you know, hang with me on this one. Sure. Diamondbacks, Cubs, Marlins, Reds. Any of those teams that good? Well, the Diamondbacks really. just crushed you two days in a row. Like, well, bust. They, well, hey, look at it objectively. All those teams, ten games to go. And you only got to sneak into the third. I'm just saying, the season's not over. Oh, oh, brother, it is gone. Do you want to know what Gabe Kapler was just quoted as saying, Chad? This is the manager of the team. Uh, uh, you got to do. Hold on, Chad. He's got to do it right. Uh, He's got to get ready. Hey, hey, Skip. Uh, 
How are you feeling about your team's chances here down the stretch? Well, obviously, the math is starting to work against us. Man. That's a direct quote, Chad, from the manager of the team. And I think you're also forgetting you can have as many crappy teams in front of you as, as, as maybe you're saying. Actually, don't even think all of them are that crappy. But um, to pa- you got to pass up all of them. Do you know how hard that is in certain was situations? Was that Kapler AI? Was that a Kapler AI? Uh, no, that was him, man. No, no, that was Gabe Yapler. Do yeah. you not do you yeah. not know Gabe Yapler, Chad? He works here. <laughs> no, you know I've been I've been hanging in Chile, man. So I'm yeah, I'm Bay Area reference. rooted. Uh, but uh, you know I just came back to see family, and I turned you guys on. I'm like, oh, I gotta call in because haven't you seen just anyone just sneak into the playoffs that isn't that good? Well, sure, I mean, that's how I of see course, guy. but 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 it's too late. It's too late, Chad. There's 10 games to go. Carroll King. They're three and a half back, and even if they were to catch the team that they're three and a half games behind, by the way, that's the Cubs, and they don't have a tiebreaker on the Cubs, so they actually need to cover four. Doing that in 10 games is really hard, and even if they do it, if the Marlins or Reds play well, they still wouldn't make the playoffs. So, my man, uh, there's nobody on this planet that appreciates positivity and optimism more than me. But, but Chad, it's over, bro. Listen to you down in Chile, man. Most definitely. I know you're positive. Man. It's over, yeah. bro. It's over. Thank you, Chad. And also, Thanks, Chad. Arizona would be a team that you potentially would have to climb over if they fell down and they hold the tiebreaker over you as well. If the Giants were to get to 85 wins... That would be them winning nine of their final ten. Yeah, they got to go nine and one, which is already and you have the Dodgers seven times or six times, seven of them on the road where they win one out of every six games. Go ahead, five and twenty-five in their last thirty. Yep. So even if you want to play out the Chad, uh, and I I understand he lives in Chile now. I I can't confirm that Chile. Uh, Whatever third reference, and I loved it. I'm just a little bit of South American envy going on right now. There you go. If the Giants were to win out. And win all 10, 86 and 76, mm. that still doesn't necessarily guarantee you. If the Cubs went seven and uh, four, because they got a game today, yep. if the Cubs went seven and four, that still wouldn't be enough. Correct. And the Diamondbacks already have 81 wins. Right. So even if you run the table and you win all 10, you would need the Cubs to play 500 Sub ball. 500 ball. And I don't know exactly who they have. I don't even need to play the schedule game because I'm not even factoring oh, in the Marlins and, and the there Reds. There you go. Even if that were all were to happen, which are ridiculous ifs, even if that were all to happen, uh, the Marlins and Reds play well, and you still don't make it. Yeah, yeah. Red, uh, Reds like, lost today, though. So ooh, keep hope alive. Ooh. So we, you know, so we stayed close to them. Yeah. Only two games back of the uh, Cincinnati Red Legs. Marlins were the base runner against the Mets early, so Uh-oh. we'll monitor that. Yeah, please do. Keep I wish today. we could scoreboard watch, but it's not even worth it. No. Look, it's done. That's it. That's it. This is coming from me. This is it. Yeah. And, and it, I hate it, to see you like it this. It didn't happen this year. No, I'm fine. This is not surprising after where we've been the last couple of months. It's yes. Su- if you had told me in mid-July that, that they'd be a 500 baseball team with 10 games to go, I would have been very surprised. Yeah. But here we are. They've played epically bad baseball for two months. Like, epically bad. And yes, I am someone who tries to keep in mind big picture. Uh, I like to go situation by situation. I, I, I think that you can look at how the Giants got here if you really want to. Some of you don't want to, and that's fine. As a fan, you don't have to. You can just be mad and have mustard on your cheek. That's fine. You want to, that, That's totally fair. You're a paying customer. If you hate this and you want everyone gone, I, I understand. I really, really do. If you want to go situation by situation, I think that you can, A, see a lot of good that's happened in this regime, and B, understand a little bit of the circumstances that have led them to this point. What I will acknowledge, though, is that we've reached a point where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can baseball us to death on this conversation, and there is a way, way, way bigger issue, okay? You got more people in the Bay Area right now interested in Deion Sanders than you do the Giants, and he doesn't even live here. Okay, and he coaches Colorado football. Coaches Colorado Buffalo football. I was out at a bar Saturday night, and it was absolutely jam packed with people who were all about Colorado, Colorado State, 
And I took a moment to look around the room and realize exactly what was going on. And it was, you know, 95% because of Deion Sanders. But that's a thing. You're low, by the way. Well, also, I mean, Colorado's 2-0, and and it's, you know, it was okay. the only thing on TV, uh, and, and some, you know. Some weirdo alum was there. Fine. Sure. Fine. <laughs> exactly. It was the, I, I know t- that weirdo alum. It, Shout out Daryl Davis. It, it was the, mo- honestly now, listen, listen to what I'm about to say, and I'm going to credit Dave Fleming with this. This was the most watched late night television event in history. End of sentence. Not since 2000, not in the sports world. What about world. the MASH finale, Mark? This was the most watched <laughs> late night television show ever. Letterman's last show? Johnny Carson when he did that Karnak thing? Nope. This Leno on a motorcycle? This is it. Arsenio? So, woo, woo, woo. It's <laughs> Thank you. Just flew in from Cleveland. Um, it's 2023. And I know that this is not just because it's 2023, but you are in such an... We know this as well as anyone, okay? When you work in the world that, that we work, you are in such an unbelievable competition in the world of content for people's attention, for people's eyes, and for people's ears. If I am the owner of the Giants, okay, I'm looking at this and I'm going, I, I get it. I get that Rodon, Correa, all the Carloses, I get it. It's been bad. So you made smart moves. And you can sit in a room and talk to people and go, here's why we did this. Here's why we didn't do that. And I go, I get it. I totally get it. But there's a bottom line that's got nothing to do with baseball. You've lost your audience. You've lost the fan base. You have lost your connection to people. And that is bigger than baseball. It's bigger than the standings. I actually have reached a point where I don't know if the Giants had made the wild card this year if they would have sold the building out for playoff games. Right. If playoff games had ended up there. I don't even know. You've lost your audience. And that is, that's the baseline. That's where we got to start this conversation. So, sure, one more games than you lost. And lemons out of, you know, lemonade out of lemons. All of those things are true. But what is everybody supposed to do if an entertainment outlet loses its audience? Right. What is it? I, I don't know what anyone's supposed to do with that. Well, if you are the entertainers, it's easy. Become more entertaining. And that's basically what the job is now for the Giants. You mentioned the fade. They were 61-49 and 49 after winning the third straight against Arizona at home on August 3rd. 12 games up. You had beaten down Arizona. You were in the wild card race. You were in the hunt. You were a fixture. You were humming. And then since then, it's been a slow, inexorable fade. And with the Niners back and humming and the Warriors right around the corner, you're right, Mark. The only job, forget the winning and the losing and the Gabe or the no Gabe and the Farhan or the no Farhan. You are an entertainment entity. How about you become more entertaining? Yeah, and, and they've said, we think winning is entertaining, but that puts you in a real bad bucket where, like, your plan has to work at an epic level. And when, when players disappoint or get hurt, you know what I mean? Larry Bear had that quote at the beginning of the year. It's like, oh, people get it now. We've had to explain it to them. But when they see Conforto and Hanniger and Manaya and Stripling, oh, now they get it. Get what? All four of them have been disappointing. Not necessarily through any fault of their own always. Hanniger got hit on the wrist and broke a bone. But you can't peacock about something that hasn't happened yet. You know what I mean? Absolutely. The 49ers can't celebrate their win tomorrow night yet because it hasn't happened yet. You're listening to 95.7 The Game. KGMZ FM and HC1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Twitch and YouTube. Powered by First NorCal Credit. When a fourth of your games involve the... The home team, or your team, the favorite team, not all these games are home teams, but when 34 of your games result in zero or one run, that's a problem in terms of entertainment. And the old expression of chicks dig the long ball is outdated and it's sexist. Baseball fans dig the long ball. We all dig the long ball. We like runs. We like guys going first to third. Yeah, we like I, a guy scoring on a base hit to right center, and he's rounding third, and you know Flannery's going to wave uh, him in and all the rest of it. I like good players. But also, 
Like, even if you're like, even if you're losing games yeah. twelve to eleven, that's more entertaining than losing one nothing. I get it, but I it's like the, I, that's not even. I don't just need home runs. Like you got to be good. You you like have good players, have offense, have people who can run. You actually said at the end of last year, our goal is to be more athletic and better defensively. It's the least athletic baseball team I've ever seen. And also, your goal was to be better defensively. And you have 15 more errors than the next most erroneous team in baseball. And your bottom five and all the new metrics of UZR and defensive runs saved and all the rest of it. So, you, you know, if you're not going to hit a bunch of home runs and your offense was pretty flaccid all year, then darn it, pitching and defense. And let's do it like they did in 10, 12, and 14. Yep. Well, you didn't catch it. And yesterday showed you... You don't really throw it very well defensively either. No, like I was so turned off by the defense of last year, and uh, this year was better, and then it got worse, and now it's almost turned me off even more. Like you said, Jock Peterson was not going to go in the outfield, and then he did, and then he started falling down when fly balls are coming his way. Michael Douglas. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's, yes. What they set out to do last offseason, they failed. That's really all, all, all you all you can say right so 107 wins was an unmitigated success over the moon last year was a failure <laughs> and then this year is a failure so now you're looking at yeah. you know back-to-back -back strikes you're i think you're in a one and two count in terms of first years of pandemic whatever it was a no throw yeah time was no time was called it's no pitch gabe's first year Right, yeah. and then subsequent now it's a one-two count for Gabe and Farhan, and if next year is like this year, uninteresting oh. and flatlining, they they wouldn't even make it to the end of the year. You're probably right. They wouldn't even make it to the end. Yeah, of the year man, like that. Um, that made me laugh. Drew down. Drew down's on YouTube. He said, "How's their Babbitt looking?" Nice. Not very good is the answer. I think. I wonder how I bad know. their Babbitt <laughs> is. I'll look it up. I'm actually looking at. Team stats, because yeah. I wanted to see just how bad their defense has been this year. Because yeah. last year was really, really bad. And I wonder how much, if it's a little bit better than last Look year. Look up the BABIP. For those of you who don't I speak will. analytics, BABIP stands for batting average on balls in play. So that sometimes that can give you an idea of when a team is unlucky. Because it's like if you hit a lot of balls hard um, and, and you know you're not, you're not getting hits out of it, that means you're snake bit a little bit. Um, while you look that up, uh, the dulcet tones of America's favorite cheeseburger chaser, it's Gabe Kapler also letting you know uh, this season's cooked. Yeah, I mean, obviously these were must-win games, and, um, you know, going back several games, those were also must-win games. And um, now the math is not on our side, and, you know, every game is, is one that we have to win. Okay, so there it is. Obviously. I'm so glad he started with obviously. Yeah, I mean, obviously these were must-win games. And, um, you know, going back several games, those were yeah. also must-win games. And um, now the math is not on our side. And, you know, every game is, is one that we have to win. No, every game is not one you have to win because let's actually, I'm going to do hit to him what, what you love to do to me. Let's use the English language in reverse here. Uh, obviously, those were must-win games. And the ones before it were must-win games. And we didn't win them. Therefore, it's over. You can't lose must-win games and then say, so now we've got to win the up. No. You already lost the must-win game. Sure. You must win them, and you didn't. Yeah. So we moving on. You got a football game tomorrow night. And I can't wait. And we are now just uh, 25 hours away from Thursday night football down there at Levi's. You and I live from the Hilton. And I love those broadcasts. And yep. Being within uh, shouting range of the stadium, we're both going over as soon as we possibly can, and that's exciting. But first, uh, and I do want to get your Brandon Crawford thoughts. Yes. But uh, and I know we got uh, plenty of calls to get to. Giants and Babip batting average on balls in play, two ninety eight this year. League average two ninety seven. Okay. So they're right. Right where everybody else is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I do want to. I do want to get to Crawford, and there's actually some developing news there. Uh, but let's go to Ben in Oakland. Hey, Ben, what you doing? You're on with Willard and Dibs. Hey, guys. Just want to, to say what's up. I'm uh, I'm driving home. Right on, man. What's on your mind? Hey, I heard you guys talking about Dion uh, from the from the Bay Area, but I, I actually went to to see you for school. And there you go. Obviously, pretty stoked. Pretty stoked about what's going on with the the football program. Dion's obviously brought a bunch of energy to to the school, and just trying to kind of kind of connected to the, the Giants and 
how boring of a brand of baseball it's been this season. Like, do you guys think there is there is any sort of manager uh, that could come in and bring sort the the energy that that Dion has brought to to the Buffaloes uh, to an organization that has just felt dead for the last couple of months? Well, here's how I'd answer, Ben. Thanks. I. Yeah, the answer is Dion. Well, right. In other Former words, giant. Dion, <laughs> good call. <laughs> Did you see him say last week they asked him what the hardest thing to do in sports? Like, have you ever struggled with anything? And he said hitting a baseball. Yeah. He said, that's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. And he was a athlete. good hitter. He was all right. Damn near 300 for his career. Look that up. Absolutely. And I've got defensive stats. I'm looking up a lot for are, you, but go are, ahead. Are, are you sure? Are he you was, sure about that? I will. Uh, Deion I mean, Sanders, give a little baseball reference okay. on Deion Sanders. I got it for you. Go I ahead. I would be very surprised if he was a, an almost 300 career hitter. Um, but uh, but anyway, I, I think it's very difficult to, to set that bar for anything in terms of entertainment. Deion Sanders has taken a one-win football team and turned them into the biggest thing on television in less than a year. That's insanity. So to set the bar there and say... Oh, who could be the next Deion Sanders for any team in any sport? They'd all hire him. I mean, they, they would all hire him yeah. immediately. Do you know how many millions upon millions upon millions of dollars this has meant to Colorado? Uh, like Alabama would fire Saban and hire Dion if they knew that it was going to lead to that kind of money. It's been that intense. So to set that bar and say who could be the Dion for the Giants, the answer is it yeah. doesn't exist. 263 career. Okay. One year he hit 300. Okay. What did he hit for the Giants? For the Giants in 52 games, he hit 285. Okay. It's better than I thought. Yeah. But 263. Okay. Anyway. Played um, a lot longer than I remember. So go ahead. Yeah. The answer to your question, though, is if you wanted a hire that would make the fan base all get giddy, and all be like, oh my gosh, I'm back into Giants baseball. No matter how many platoons you got, there are only two names, and the only one of them is available. One of them is Bruce Bochy. The other one's Buster Posey. Right, right. It's Buster Posey. I don't. Th my read. I have no info on this at all, and I know Bonte's and Joe have been playing with this for a few weeks. I, it, I doubt that he would want to do that. I doubt that he would want to do that. That's yes, all I'd say. I doubt it very, very much based on uh, my sources, sources around my neighborhood. And uh, he's out there dadding it up with the other dads. I live near a spot where it's dad central on does, the weekends. Does he have a dad bod? I haven't really seen him in okay. person. And, uh, you know, I'm in a community where there's a bunch of middle-aged white guys out there dadding it up. <laughs> and he would be one of them. He's not so, quite middle age yet, is he? We're not going to put that on. Thirty five to fifty five, I think, is middle age, right? Uh, I don't. I don't like doing that to people who are in their mid thirties. Whatever, you're yeah. getting close to being elderly. Oh, so I'm. I'm. I'm in. You're I'm, middle aged. I'm middle aged. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to hang on to my Buster, middle age Buster, a little bit. Buster is not. No, you're eight. But from what I <laughs> thank you, you're getting the mailers. Don't lie. By the way, Buster's thirty six. Got an extra year. Yeah. So I'm seeing a lot of middle-aged white guys dadding it up, and he's one of them, and I don't think that he wants to break that with four young kids. The reason why he stopped playing baseball, in part, was to dad it up. Yep. And being a skipper is a grind, kid. Uh, no doubt. No I saw doubt. you grinding over Little League. Oh, brother. Good Lord. Tough year for you. It was. It yeah. was. Uh, hey, hot seat. Hot seat talk in the yeah, North Bay. I tell you what. Yeah, you want to talk about one and done. <laughs> Uh, I get knocked down, and I don't get up again. 